In the year 431, the Council of Ephesus took place and condemned the Nestorius heresy, claiming that Jesus Christ was only a mere man and he was not God. It also came from this doctrine or this false doctrine was that Mary could not be the mother of God since she could only be the mother of Christ who was just a man. But the Council of Ephesus condemned this heresy and proclaimed Mary the mother of God. On the 1500th anniversary in the year 1931, Pope Pius XI wrote an encyclical to the bishops in communion with him on the maternity of the Blessed Virgin and its role in our spiritual life. In this encyclical, Pius XI lays the history of the dogma, the heresy specifically of Nestorius, and how it attacked not only the Mother of God, but most importantly, Christ. For where Christ is attacked, also his mother is as well. Mary is truly the mother of God, for she is Christ's mother. And Christ, as we say in the creed, is true God and true man. The union of these two natures, divine and human, in the person of Christ is called the hypostatic union. And if she gave birth to Christ, she gave birth to God. Therefore, she is truly the mother of God. But Mary is the mother of God, and therefore she has another singular privilege, being all holy. At the Annunciation, the angel Gabriel addressed her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. It is in this moment which preceded the divine motherhood that moment of the Incarnation, which took place at her fiat. In St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, there is that woman in the crowd who cries out to Christ when she said, Blessed is the womb that bore thee and the paps that gave thee suck. He responded to her, saying, Yea, rather blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. We see that the Divine Motherhood and her personal sanctity are necessary. She is the Mother of God because she is holy. The Divine Motherhood is the primary, the central fact in Mary's election and predestination on the part of God. She can be called the Mother of God, for she is immaculate. She is without sin, without stain. But it would not be only Nestorius who would attack the Blessed Virgin. In the 16th century, the so-called reformers would reject, would reject all honors paid to the Blessed Virgin on the grounds that such a veneration given to Mary would take away worship due to her divine Son. But we all know that those who refuse the mar to marry the title of Theotokos, Mother of God, also refuse to our Lord the title the Son of God. Leo XIII is cited by Pope Pius XI in the encyclical on the Divine Maternity. Let all, therefore, with more ardent zeal in the present necessities with which we are afflicted, go to her and beseech her with instant supplication that through her prayers to her Son, the erring nations may return to the Christian institutions and precepts which are the firm support of public safety, and from which arises an abundance of much-desired peace and of true happiness. Let them implore of her more earnestly what ought to be desired above all things by all the good, namely that the Church our Mother may gain and tranquilly enjoy her liberty, which she always uses for the best advantage of men, and from which individuals and states have never suffered any losses, but have at all times experience very many and very great benefits. The maternity is not limited, if you will, to the divine order. 
The Blessed Virgin was also, at the moment of the Incarnation and her compassion on the cross, made to be the spiritual mother of all men. And she is the spiritual mother of all men, therefore she has great power, for she has an order. Like all mothers are called to take care, to look after, and to watch over their children, the Blessed Virgin has the care and the watchful eye over us all. As we call our mother Virgo Potens, the powerful virgin, divine motherhood is an immense power in the world of grace, the greatest power after the redemptive power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We call her the mother of mercy. We call her life. We call her our sweetness and our hope, as we say in the Salve Regina. She has, if you will, no limitations, because we cannot see any limits to her greatness and her power, though we know that there are limits somewhere, but the limits, wherever they may be, will never be reached by any other creature. So like humble children, let us go to our mother. Go to the Blessed Virgin. Pray to her. Pray this rosary. Pray other devotions, the litany, the other beautiful prayers, the Salve Regina. Pray it as a family. The Angelus. There are so many great devotions to the Mother of God. And as we say these devotions, as we pray them, we are like humble children going to our mother, asking her, begging her, pleading for her help. The Blessed Virgin is not just Christ's mother, she is also our own mother. A few moments before he gave his last breath, he gave the whole of humanity the Blessed Virgin to be their mother. St. John represented the whole of humanity when Christ gave her to him. And he said, Woman, behold thy son. And then he told the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour on, the disciple took her as his own. May we take our Blessed Virgin as our own. The mother of Christ is our own mother. Let us go to her often, pray to her. She who is powerful with Christ and powerful against the evil one. In these dark days which we live, both in society and in the church, May we pray that the Blessed Virgin, during these difficult moments, these difficult trials, intercedes for us, protects us, guides us as any good mother will. May she intercede for us poor children. We are not left orphans. We are not left behind. She is there. Let us pray and pray our rosary in, un in union with all of those around our postulates in America this powerful prayer as we kneel in front of the statue of the Mother of God, our Mother, the Blessed Virgin.